Hey guys, um, I just wanted to post an update on the Northern locomotive that I'm building. I appreciate all the response that I got on the last two videos I posted. I've been amazed at uh, how many people were interested in this locomotive product or project. And um, it's got my family all excited. And my daughters are insisting that I continue posting videos and it's fun for me. So I wanted to tell you uh, what I'm doing right now. I'm working on the suspension system of the locomotive. This, this is the locomotive flipped inverted. So this is belly up. And you'll see that I've, I've had the suspension system pinned so that it's rigid. And that was to aid in building these side rods. Uh, I just eliminated all the variables I could so I could get those dimensions measured out and proper. But in reality, the suspension needs to have some movement so as it goes down the track, and the track's not level, it can adapt to the track. I'm building this locomotive from a set of plans and uh, it calls for a suspension system that uh, this is where the axle comes out and this is the piece that, that moves up and down and we've got the springs here that provide the, the suspension. Uh, the dimensions of the springs are indicated here on the plans. And I've never built a springs before. So I uh, had to study up on spring theory and I discovered that Hemingway Kits out of the United Kingdom offers a spring winding tool. It's, this comes as plans and I bought the plans from them and the materials. And then I spent about two days making this tool. It turned out really nice. I'm very proud of the way that it, uh, that it looks and it operates just as good as it looks. So once I used that, I wound up with 16 springs of the proper dimension and a spare. And these will be used to, uh, to add to the locomotive project. It took me about four hours to make the springs. That, that was a little bit of a learning curve for me. I probably could do it two hours now that I've uh, gotten some practice. And I spent about two days making the, the tool. And that's the uh, company that provided the kit for the tool. So I'll show you now how the tool's used on the lathe. And once again, thank you all for watching. I do appreciate it so much. I know this is a uh, amateur hour uh, as far as videos are concerned, but uh, I'm doing my best to, to uh, show you guys how this project's coming and maybe provide a little entertainment when you're bored. Thank you. All right, so what you do is you stick this in here in the arbor and you have to bend your little hook on there to catch it. And then the key here is you gotta put a lot of pressure on it and put your two full wraps because I'm designing springs that have a closed in on them. So then once you do two wraps like that, you slide your tool up, put the lathe in low gear. Now, here's where the magic starts. You have to cut it off so that it coasts right where I've got a little notch turned in that arbor and you put it back in high gear so you can spin it and then I got to put two wraps on there that are right next to each other for my ground end on the spring and then once you do that then I'll cut this off there's my spring and this arbor diameter determines the diameter of the spring. And now the hard part is getting the spring off. To do that, I've got to get that little hook straightened out that I put in there. And then I push up on that and I have to grind that hook off or else um, I'll mess my spring, spring up if I try to cut it off.
Right. You get that done without messing your arbor up. And you wind up with a spring like that, but your ends aren't pretty. So then you walk over here. And I've got this jig set up with a hole board in it so that I can grind the end of my spring. But to get the spring to go in there, I get to get that little tab off. Put it in there and turn it. And you wind up with a ground in like you want. Come on. 